Welcome to the Kentucky Bankers Association's 10th Vendor Viewpoint Podcast, where we bring together Kentucky bankers and the industry's top solution providers to discuss important topics that affect your bank. Are you still on the fence about overdraft protection? Then join us for this informative conversation on the hot topic of overdraft protection as Steve Swanston with Velocity Solutions and Cheryl Hartzell of First Community Bank of the Heartland in Clinton as they discuss how overdraft protection is a valuable and responsible service when it's done right and how Velocity's intelligent limit system and cash please are being used at First Community. Steve and Cheryl, thank you so much for taking time out to have this discussion with us. Selena, I'm turning it over to you. Welcome audience. This is Selena Parrish, KBA Director of Membership Products and Services. Today, we're excited to have Velocity's EVP of Sales, Steve Swanston with us, and also Cheryl Hartzell, Senior Vice President and Chief Operations Officer with First Community Bank of the Heartland in Clinton. Thank you both for being with us. KBA has endorsed Velocity for many years. And uh, Steve, kick it off by telling us all the great things you're doing for community banks. Sure, thanks Selena so much. And uh, great to be here with you and Cheryl today. Um, and yeah, you know, we're very appreciative of our longstanding relationship with, uh, with the KBA and, uh, and great clients and great banks such as uh, First Community Bank of the Heartland. Uh, really the key thing that, that is we're delivering in conjunction with the KBA and, and really quite frankly, that's been on top of mind of most bankers we have talked to now for the last several months is a term that we call consumer liquidity. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll back into that uh, because most people, when we use the word consumer liquidity, at least five years ago, would scratch their head and, and not be quite cognizant of what consumer liquidity was. Um, as we have evolved, consumer liquidity, in, in our, at least our mind, has, has become the forefront of what we're offering our, our bank clients and ultimately their account holders. And, and by consumer liquidity, we mean how do we help our customers? How do we help the account holders at our bank in times of liquidity need? And liquidity need is not a home mortgage or a new car loan. It's your, your sh short-term financial crunch, if you will, that, uh, that everybody falls into from time to time. And I'll share some stats here in, in just a second, but it's how do we help these consumers put their hands on $300, $500, $1,000 to, to address short-term deficits. And, and we deliver that through our, what we call our consumer liquidity engine. And that's really comprised of four key components that uh, our bank clients engage with us on. And, and I'll list those briefly and, and I'll jump into a couple of stats is um, our consumer liquidity engine consists of our velocity intelligent limit system which is really the nucleus of, of all of the consumer liquidity solutions. That is, that is the engine that drives everything that we offer in this, in this um, product line. And that's how we determine a propensity to repay algorithm. Um, it generates what we call the velocity score, which is using alternative data uh, to help create underwriting and determine that velocity score, which again is that propensity to repay number. That is relevant in both our overdraft platform um, that we uh, share with our banks and our cash please solution, uh, which is our small dollar short-term lending solution. Also as part of our consumer liquidity engine is training uh, working with both our bank staff, helping with Reg E management, which is a critical piece of providing education um, to, the, uh, to the end account holders. A couple of key stats um, that not everybody may be aware of, although if uh, you spend much time on social media, uh, LinkedIn, you'll, you've probably seen these over the last few months, is that 47% of Americans uh, currently say they could not put their hands on $500 in an emergency expense. 60% um, of millennials don't have $1,000 in savings. And 54% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. 
Um, some of these, these numbers are quite alarming. And, and a recent number I saw, which uh, even the high net worth households, that is households earning over $200,000 collectively, 36% of those households live paycheck to paycheck as well. And so consumer liquidity is, is something that affects all households from, uh, from small to large. And that's really what we strive to help our bank clients uh, uh, through the KBA uh, accomplish is, is providing that type of liquidity service to their account holders. And I know all of our banks have really had overdraft top of mind with all the news articles and everything that's going on up in Washington. And Cheryl, how are you putting Velocity's liquidity solutions to work there at your bank? Well, we've had this program for, it'll be two years, I believe, in August. And, you know, we're seeing every day the number of overdrafts increase, you know, the number of past dues increase, the number of charge-offs increase. And so by using this program, it's able to look at each customer's account balance, their deposits, their um, the amount, not only the amount of the deposits, but, you know, when's the last time that they made one? And as um, Steve mentioned, it gives that score, you know, that it's their ability to repay. So if they're running into trouble, you know, it pulls back that limit uh, so that they don't overextend themselves. So by putting this product into place in, in our business, you know, it's, it's helping our customers have the liquidity if they need it. And, you know, if they run into trouble, then it doesn't allow them to get, you know, overextended. And as he also mentioned, you know, this isn't just your low-income households. This is everybody. Um, the more you make, the more you spend. I think we all fall into that category. So, you know, this, we've got our set up. And, you know, when we went live with this program, Velocity helped us to determine what we wanted our limits and our parameters to be, what our, you know, our risk profile was going to be, and, you know, it can be anywhere from $100 to $1,750. Well, you know, who needs a $1,750 overdraft limit? Well, maybe a doctor does. You know, maybe they just ran into an issue and, and they need to get something cleared. Uh, and, you know, we just put this into place. Um, well, this is actually our third overdraft product. Um, we initially went to it because it, it's so much more efficient and the first one we had, you know, had a static $500 limit. Well, that's not fair. That's not fair to the doctor. That's not fair to somebody on Social Security who maybe only gets $800 a month. So when we moved to the dynamic limits, then we felt that that was better suited for our customers to meet their needs. Dynamic limits, I, I like that. That's where it comes into play, keeping everything compliant also. And I know that's a big piece of where all the banks now are concerned about with everything going on in Washington. How will the examiners start maybe scrutinizing everything that the banks are doing? Steve Sherrill, can you speak to that? Do you, do you have any feedback from recent exams that are examiners coming in and drilling deeper into what banks are doing? We haven't had an exam since last summer, but they found no uh, product problems with our exam at that time or with our program at that time. And we have regular ongoing audits. Um, we outsource some of our internal audit and they haven't found any issues with it either. Um, we keep very close watch to what's happening in Washington. I mean, this is all the buzz and we talk about it frequently and we feel like our program already is better than most of the bigger banks. We have not ever charged the fees that they charge. Um, so industry average, we're below, but we have been watching um, maybe lowering our de minimis um, okay. so that we could, you know, give them more flexibility. Um, and then there, of course there's the representment fees that they're concerned about. And we've talked with our core and the best we can tell is that our core cannot program that in there to where it's not charged a second time if the same item comes through. 
And as best I can tell, none of the other cores have that availability yet either. So if, you know, the examiners do come down on that, we'll just have to eliminate that altogether. And we've started tracking that amount to see what impact it would have on us. But, you know, velocity, that's one of the things that we feel that is so excellent about them is their expertise in this area. And they keep us up to date, whether it's, you know, any changes, they're immediately sending out a letter from um, their CEO or a white paper, you know, they're discussing these things, and we're not caught off guard. Of course, mm -hmm. if we have any questions whatsoever about how it affects our program, you know, they're right there uh, telling us, giving us, you know, some mm -hmm. advice on it, or, you know, running some samples is if we make this change, how's it going to affect our program? Certainly, that's wonderful. And also, I think, Steve, you mentioned training. So for the staff inside the bank, you make sure at Velocity that each of those employees inside the bank are well-trained and up to speed on everything that's going on in the industry, I guess. Certainly, this is, you know, the landscape in 2022 looks a lot different than it did in 2002. And I use those two as reference points because that's when I got into this space, into the overdraft space. And it's hard to believe it's been 20 years, but um, 20 years ago, it was, it was a set it and forget it mindset. It was really one motivation and that was to maximize revenue. Um, and then everything else would, would take care of itself. And, and that has really been flipped on its head now in, in 2022. So the education and training is paramount. But to quickly go back to, to what Cheryl touched on is, you know, there's three key elements that, that we constantly keep in, in tune with. And that's the regulatory environment, it's the legislative environment, and it's the competitive marketplace environment. And all three of those impact um, recommendations, best practices, and, and ultimately what our clients want to deliver to their customer. And one of the things that we share with everybody is we are not force feeding our programs to any of our customers. We are helping them set up their programs. And the program that Cheryl offers um, at the bank may look certainly different than, than another bank just 100 miles down the street based on the strategies, the size, the, the demographics uh, of what they're trying to achieve. And so we curtail all of that um, to the bank. And then as we deliver and train, yes, it, it is training. It's paramount that the front line um, understands what the opportunities are for the account holders, what the benefits are. Uh, the great thing about the software versus the human element of this is that it takes away any of the uh, uh, perhaps the undefendable actions um, that, that could happen and, and we and provides what we like to call a fully defendable uh, solution because it is all based on on the data flow through through the system. So then every action and every recommendation that somebody at the front line, whether it's um, the automated uh, 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 refund module that's in there uh, is deciding to waive fees, refund fees um, is all automated for for the, the staff at the bank. But certainly um, all of that is highly trained upon as well. That's wonderful. And I think that's the, uh, the other reason why KBA has enjoyed the relationship with Velocity is because we do have quite a diverse asset size of community banks, but yet you do have a turnkey solution where you can make it work for any and all of our member banks. And I think that's important whenever KBA is working with one of our endorsed companies. And Cheryl, there at the bank, I know from all the conversations I'm having with bankers, from your standpoint, as far as customers and complaints or anything, how, how have your customers adopted into the program that your bank is offering? Um, I mean, quite frankly, they they like it. Um, you know, they will come into the bank and want to know if we have a program. You know, we don't let them have it day one. We make them, you know, have their account established for, you know, a month or three months or whatever the uh, system looks at before they get the program. And, you know, we explain to them when they open it that it is a dynamic limit, that it is based upon their actions, their deposits, their um, how long or how often they make their deposits in the amount. And they seem to understand that. It, it, if they've come from a bank that had a static limit, 
it may take them a little bit to understand, but we really don't have any complaints from it. And if somebody gets overextended, you know, it will shut the system will give them a zero limit and allow them to come back to zero. If they cannot um, get it back to zero within 30 days or positive, uh, we will always work with them to, you know, try to get it to where they can. And I mean, sometimes they can't, and you know, that's just the reality of it. But we have seen that, you know, some of these customers that use this program, they're going to go somewhere for their liquidity. And unfortunately, too many of the times it is a cash um, advance, you know, uh, place. And those things just are terrible. They take advantage of the customers. They have such high APRs. You know, they get into a cycle and they and they just can't use, they can't ever get out of it. And you know, we don't allow that to happen with our customers. You know, we work with them. The system monitors all that stuff. You know, it sends the correct regulatory letters out if they have used it too many times to kind of give them a warning. So we we think it works great. That's great to know because I know some of the statistics, and Steve, you probably can speak to this more than my myself just from reading, but the statistics of customers really complaining about this type of solution that banks offers. Customers are appreciative of the banks going ahead and taking care of that payment and not rejecting the payment. So, yeah, we we you know one of the one of the key things that we focus in on and we talk about a lot is is the function versus the fees, and you know all of the scrutiny on overdraft and and so I'll, I'll talk about overdraft specifically because consumer liquidity we have a small dollar loan program as well, but but from an overdraft standpoint we try and separate the function from the fees, and I would argue. If the fees were set aside, then a bank allowing a account holder to go into a courtesy negative balance is perhaps one of the greatest services that the bank offers that account holder, uh, because the other options aren't very pretty, where it's a return all environment or a decline all environment. Um, and I'm old enough to remember walking into convenience stores in the 80s and 90s and seeing the wall of shame posted back behind there, photos of people's checks and their driver's license for writing hot checks. And, and I don't think that's an environment that anybody certainly wants to, uh, wants to push us back into. So it's that function of taking people negative is, is the true benefit. The fees have what have come under scrutiny and that's kind of what is, is constantly evolving. Cheryl touched on it. We have the ability to help our clients do kind of a champion challenger model and say, what if? What if we increased the de minimis? What if we lowered our fee? What if we gave a courtesy 24 hour gap? What if we eliminated uh, the NSF fee component, which these are all strategies that are going into play in the marketplace right now. And we can come to something that still works for the bank, obviously as a line of business, but continues to provide that function uh, to the account holder. That's great. And for the listeners today, if any of our uh, KBA members who are listening do not have a program like what Velocity is offering. From start to finish, what would be the cycle of implementing your solution at a bank? Sure. So from an implementation standpoint, so we get through, you know, discussing T's and C's of contracts, but uh, once we engage in a contract, we have a, a fairly standard 90 day window for an implementation timeframe that we work within. A lot of the heavy lift on that is, is on us. Um, on our end, obviously there's some tasks for the, uh, for the bank to go through um, and we'll work with a, a launch date for them. But uh, in most cases, we are, we are up and running within 90 to 120 days. Wow, that's pretty fast. I guess that's faster with thinking of all the things that you've got to pull together. Uh, that's moving pretty quick uh, well, we're, we're, to get a bank up and running. We, we've now done this 500 times and you know, have, I think the, the current number is 35 million consumer checking accounts running through um, this program. So we, we've done it a couple of times. Certainly, the experience makes a difference. And Cheryl, for any of our listeners, what would you as a banker recommend to others who are listening who may not have 
a solution like you're using, uh, recommendation star banks? Uh, the one reason that we ended up going with Velocity, our other product was being sunset, so we were having to, to move to a different one. But the reporting that they offer that allows us to manage, monitor the program is, you know, top notch. It beat anything that we'd ever seen before. Um, as I mentioned before, their expertise, uh, this is what they do. If we have any questions, you know, they're there to answer it. And we appreciate that. And they're not just guessing, you know, it's, it's lawyers who have, who have studied this and, and understand it. So, you know, we really enjoy uh, working with them as a vendor and whether it's the customer service side or, you know, the uh, technical side or just running the program itself. It has, it has actually been a, a very good relationship, which we don't always have that with some of our vendors. Excellent. That is great to know, Cheryl. And Steve, tell our audience, what is the best way for them to get in contact with you or someone on your team if they're interested in learning more about Velocity? Sure, um, happy to reach out to me directly. Uh, email is sswanston at myvelocity.com. Or certainly you can reach out to uh, Aaron Thomas, who is our Kentucky-based rep, and her contact information is available uh, on the KBA website um, through our Velocity link page. Um, and certainly, Selena, if, uh, if in doubt, uh, Selena and staff could probably point you towards uh, getting in contact with us. Thank you, Steve. And thank you, Cheryl, so much for spending time with us today and talking through how Velocity is working there at the bank, Cheryl. And all the things that you're doing for the banks here in Kentucky, Steve. Thank you so much. And that's right, on KBA's website, there's a lot more information available and contact information is there also. And audience, please start making your plans to attend the KBA's uh, annual convention. It's gonna kick off on September 17th and we wrap up on the 20th. We're gonna be down at the JW Marriott Marco Island Beach Resort and you can Find more information at kbaconvention.com. And that's all for this episode. And until next time, this podcast is a wrap. Have a great day, everyone.